All right. All right. This video is about the ongoing idle and start issue and cutoff issue that this vehicle's had pretty much since I bought it, although it's come and gone as it pleases. As you can see here, it won't start consistently. It tries to, but it just doesn't want to catch. Don't mind the sagging headliner. I know uh, in the previous video it showed me fixing it. I have fixed it. This video is from before that time. As you can see, I'm staring through the steering wheel, looking at the gauges and trying to figure out if the codes are going to um, reappear or what codes will appear this time. I've had a variety of codes, which I'll put in the description below. The reason I'm showing you several attempts to start it here is in case anyone else has the same problem, you can see if their symptoms of yours match up to mine. Uh, it's hard to start. It'll catch sometimes. Sometimes it won't. Even when it did catch, it would idle for three or four minutes and then shut off after uh, experiencing rougher and rougher idle as time went on. As you guys have seen in some of the previous clips, this car has a sputtering starting issue. It's kind of weird when the car was delivered, it was idling and running fine. I drove around the block, no issues at all. But since it got delivered, it's been hard to start and doesn't even ever idle. There's a few clues that I've discovered in the trunk of the car as to what might be the issue. I found a starter motor uh, box, AC Delco starter motor box with the old starter in there. So their starter has been recently replaced. That would tell me either it's a coincidence or someone spent a lot of time trying to start this car. So it might not be the first time this car has suffered from ignition problems. The other clue I found is the uh, pickup coil. Uh, the pickup coil goes inside the distributor. I googled how to replace that. It looked like more work than I was willing to do. So I thought I would try my luck and look at the ignition module instead. The ignition module also lives in the distributor, but it's very easy to get to. Anybody who's owned a Chevy V8 from this era knows what these things are. They're the cause of most start issues and rough running issues. In fact, I've replaced one before on my 92 Suburban way back when, around the time I owned my Trans Am, circa 2005. Uh, the Suburban wouldn't start. I, after a very long road trip, I parked it, wouldn't start. Burned through my own starter motor trying to restart it. That didn't work, of course. So I asked one of the mechanics at the Saturn dealership that I worked at, and he knew his Chevy V8s. He said, do the ignition control module. It's almost certainly that. I popped in one for 25 bucks and presto, it was fixed. So I'm hoping the same thing is true for my problem now, the ignition control module. So I picked one up at Advance Auto. Nope, AutoZone, sorry. It was at AutoZone. Um, it was the only one that had it around me in stock. So we're gonna give it a shot and see if that works. To get to the ignition control module, it's very easy. There are two small screws on the rotor. Of course, the rotor lives like this on the car. There's one screw, where is it, down here. Here it is, right there. Another one on the other side. And I just popped those two off. I did take off half of the spark plug wires so I could tip this rotor over like this. I tried to arrange the spark plug wires conveniently so I could remember where they go, but just in case I took a picture because somebody beforehand marked these with different uh, number of the dots. I'm guessing that equates to the cylinder number. So if you are taking off your spark plug wires, even half of them, mark them, take a picture, arrange them, tag them somehow so you don't put them on the wrong way. And now I'm down to the ignition control module. I've got one screw out already. There's another one on the other side you can see. And then I already got the two plugs off here and here. Super easy to get off. And I noticed this one is the original GM ignition control module. It says GM right on it. I'm hoping that means it's as old as the car is and that that's my problem. Let's find out. All right, got the old one out. Just note that there is one more plug on the front of the ignition control module. That's the red one right there. Looks like that goes to the pickup coil actually. So I got that one out. Uh, put it on my bench here. It doesn't look as old as I thought. It's kind of newish looking. I don't know. It's hard to tell in this car 
for all this car's problems, a lot of the things are pretty well preserved. And I can't tell if this is old or new, but I'll assume whoever would have replaced it in the last five years or so wouldn't have gotten a brand new GM one. So I'm still hoping it's very old and the problem, but let's find out. Just know that when you're installing the new one, this gucky fluid right here, this, this gel, it has to be installed on the new one as well. That's a heat sink so that the module does not get too hot. So if you see one and you just see the component, don't don't just put this on without anything else. You gotta put on this, this silicone, looks like silicone, silicone goop on the metal side. That helps dissipate the heat. So don't forget that step. All right, the grease is on, the ICM is back on. Got the spark plug wires arranged so they should have been based on my picture. So now it's time to give it a start. Wish me luck. This would be the easiest fix ever. I love these things. Let's see. Well, that's way better than it was. Now, Now it's possible, you know, it was intermittent. The, the problem was intermittent, so let me turn off the engine. What I was saying was the problem was intermittent, so it's possible that, you know, we just got lucky and whatever was wrong with it is now in a good mood and it's fine and the ICM had nothing to do with it. But I will count it as a win for now. I think we're good on that aspect. And that's 45 bucks well spent. Just like with my Suburban like 20 years ago, that did it. So thanks internet and thanks Chris King of Central North Carolina for helping me originally with that at the Saturn dealership. So we'll knock this one off the list. It idles. I assume it's going to drive later. I'll try it, try it out, but I think we're good for now. All right. I replaced the ignition coil on the distributor and that did not fix things. It started out great. I drove it around for a while, was driving great, and then it started sputtering and hard to start again. It might have been the carburetor cleaner I put in the tank. I wonder if that did it, um, or maybe it's the pickup coil. When I bought this car, it came with a pickup coil in the trunk, which was a little suspicious. So I looked up online in a PDF file how to test the pickup coil, and if I ground this out and connect the wire, all right, if I put one prong in each of the holes, I get this resistance, it varies, 0.855, something like that, ohms, I guess. And I believe that is what it should be when I put the prongs, you know, one in each hole. Instead, if I move it to ground it on something on the car, it says zero. Same with the other prong, zero. zero, zero, and then again this, one prong in each hole, something around 0 0.85, 0 0.86. Okay, now I'm going to show you what the new pickup coil does. both prongs all right 0.868 about the same can you guys see that but then I'm gonna ground it to my my workbench I guess that should work right zero I believe the behavior is the same seems like both coils are behaving the same so maybe that's not the problem Here's the testing guide I told you about that I found online. 
Test the pickup coil. Disconnect the white and green. Set the ohmmeter to a high scale. Connect it between either the green or the white. Any resistance measurement less than infinity requires replacement. I think we had infinity, so it was fine. Test number two, steady value of some number. The number should be between in this range, and I think I had that. So it seems like the pickup coil is okay. So now I'm confused. What could be causing this car to be running poorly? I did put in some STP carburetor cleaner that I found on my shelf, thinking, oh, maybe I'll clean out the fuel injectors or something. Maybe that was a mistake. If you know anything, let me know. Next, I decided to read the service engine soon codes that show up uh, in the engine's computer. You can see the light flashing on the dashboard. It's been doing that consistently since I bought the car. To read the codes, you connect with a hunk of wire or a paper clip. Uh, two of the ports, two of the plugs in the ECM connector, that's found above the driver's left shin. And once you connect the two ports, you can turn the key to the on position, but don't start the engine. You'll see a sequence reading uh, one, followed by a two, that's just number 12, showing um, the flashes signifying number 12, and then you'll see any errors that come from that. I'm not going into a lot of details here, there's tons of documentation about it on the internet, so you can just Google third gen Camaro, how to read SES codes, and you can find it all there. It's worth pointing out that the computer will repeat any number three times. So if there is a code, for example, 34, it will flash three times, then flash four times, and then repeat three times, four times, and then repeat three times and four times. So you'll get a total of three repeated uh, numbers signifying one two-digit number, 34. The codes in my car read, of course, 12, that's the initial one that everybody sees, then 14 coolant temp sensor circuit, 15 coolant temp sensor circuit, 32 EGR system, 33 MAP sensor, 42 electronic spark or timing bypass fault, 43 electronic spark control fault. Note that 33 is MAP sensor on my car, but of course on earlier IROCs it'll be a MAF sensor, mass airflow. All right, I've got the oil pressure sender in, and now I think it's a good time for a recap of everything I've done so far to this car for this problem. Yesterday, I unplugged the battery for a couple hours, hoping that might reset the map sensor or something. Probably didn't do anything, period. I also got a hold of the previous owner who reminded me that he had unplugged the coolant temp sensor, which goes right underneath the, uh, the boot that connects to the intake duct. This is near the throttle position sensor area. I reconnected the coolant temp sensor, and on his advice, I also did what he called a reset of the throttle position sensor. That consisted of, I believe, disconnecting the battery, disconnecting the throttle position sensor, reconnecting the battery later, uh, turning the key on but don't start the car for at least 30 seconds. Then turn the key off, plug the throttle position sensor back in, turn the key on again for 30 seconds, and then after that, turn the key off and then try starting the car. Did no research on it to see if that was legit or not, but I tried it, didn't seem to work. Even though it did run properly twice after that, the third time it did stall out and fail again. So next, let's try the oil pressure sender unit. Still tracking down this inconsistent but persistent problem with the uh, stalling and rough idle on the Camaro. So now, I noticed when I started up from cold, it runs and idles fine at least for a while, and sometimes a long while, like it is right now. It's probably been on for three or four minutes and it's still idling great. I got it up on the ramps. And last night when I tried this, it did the same thing. Then I shut it off and started it again on purpose and it ran very rough. I'm afraid to shut it off now, but I probably should, just to show you guys what happens. Um, while it's still idling nicely, I'll show you, I plan on replacing the oil pressure sensor. Uh, this goes, I think, near the oil filter underneath the car. Some people say that that can affect whether the fuel pump is operational, although I've heard conflicting stories about whether or not that's true. The oil pressure sender came with the car in the trunk, so I figured, well, why not? It's free. I'll throw it on there, change the oil at the same time, and we'll try that. So it's a free upgrade and eliminates one thing from the list of possibilities anyway. So let's see how it goes. 
I got the oil drain and the filter off and I even found the oil pressure sender. That's it right there. I already got it unplugged as you can see. And I got it loose already, which is pretty easy. I guess it's well lubed, being in oil its whole life. It's loosening up pretty easily and it's coming out pretty easily. I did try to 26 millimeter wrench on it and the 26 millimeter wrench was too small. So I'm going with adjustable monkey wrench. Hate to do that because they're not as, you know, I guess safe, if you will, uh, in terms of stripping the nut. But that's what I had. Uh, if you have a large set of wrenches, I guess you might be better equipped than me, but this is working for me right now. And I'll get the old one off, get the new one on. It was idling just fine as I shut it off to change the oil, but I'll still bet 10 bucks that it'll be rough running when I start it up again and drive it off the ramps. Let's find out. All right, got the new sensor on. Here's the old one. It looks like it's old, so that's good. I'm finding a mix of new parts on this car and old parts, making me think that someone was trying to work on the same problem I am. So there's a mix of new parts, old parts, that was an old one, so maybe that gives us a chance. But what I wanted to show you is how clean this car is underneath. Some of you from warmer climates, drier climates might be wondering why I bought such a poor car in terms of cosmetics and paid hundreds and hundreds of dollars to ship it up to Chicago. Well, here's why. I mean, by Chicago standards, you could eat off of this thing. There is not any rust under here. I'm so happy every time I get under this car and so glad I don't have to deal with rust like I do with cars that are from up here or my daily driver once it gets a little older. I did buy my daily driver 4Runner from the south, but eventually it will get rusty. This one, this Camaro, no such rust. So that makes me happy. At least I got something to make myself encouraged while I'm battling this problem. All right, time to put some oil in and fire it up. I just got back from a pretty long test drive, the longest I've driven the car since I bought it. I drove around for probably eight, 10, 12 minutes, something like that, just close to my house in case it did die. The car performed awesome. The service engine soon light even went off uh, from time to time, although it did come back on. And with the engine, the service engine soon light coming on and off, even so, the car ran great, maybe a little down on power. It's hard to tell. I haven't driven one of these cars in a while, but it idled smooth. It responded great and stayed running. Most importantly, I'll start it up for y'all. You can hear it yourself. I mean, she sounds healthy. Now, I don't want to declare victory yet. Uh, I think it's too soon. This problem has been sporadic. And I've tested a few things, but at the same time, what I've mostly done is throw parts at it. Um, the most recent part, as you guys know, is the oil pressure sender. Uh, I just replaced that. I also noticed that the spark plug wire for, I believe it's the number seven cylinder, seemed to hang down low and kind of cross up and get mixed up with the oil pressure sender unit I was replacing so I tucked that spark plug wire away in case that was you know sending the wrong signals or something through the pressure sender and I changed the oil and filter and put on the new sender and ever since then all of you know 14 minutes or so it's been running great and much better than it ever has under my ownership so I guess that's I'll say promising but I don't want to declare victory yet like I said so I'll read the codes and I will see um, well, what they are, I'll see if it continues to behave itself over the next few days. Maybe I'll take it on some short errands or something. But the thing drives great, and I'm pretty ecstatic, even though I'm trying to stay um, grounded, uh, knowing that this problem could come back. So we'll see. And if this does stay uh, reliable, I'll run through all the things I did on it, um, either in this video or the next video. And at least then we'll know what it could have been to fix the problem and for the things I didn't replace what it wasn't to replace the problem. Like I said earlier, 
whoever owned this car first uh, before me, they replaced a few things here and there. I've noticed a few parts along the way, so I haven't bothered to replace the newer ones. And uh, I'd be curious to see what uh, what in the long list of things that I've done to it might have been the, the actual fix. So stay tuned. Here's what I've done at this point. I replaced the ignition control module. I tested the pickup coil and left the old one in. I observed a new map sensor already in place. I observed a new O2 sensor already in place. That's the upper one. I observed a new coolant temp sensor already in place and then reconnected it since it had not been since I got the car. I unplugged the battery for several hours hoping to reset the map sensor. I reset the throttle position sensor using the procedure described earlier in the video and under the direction of the previous owner. Cars sometimes worked at this point but still stalled out at least once. After that I replaced the oil pressure sender and I moved the number 7 cylinder plug away from the oil pressure sender wiring. If I had to guess, it was the oil pressure sender and or the spark plug resting against the wires for that sender. It's been, I would say, a week or two now. I've taken three or four trips with the car, uh, totaling maybe 22 miles, if that, and it has not acted up since. It's still a little down on power. I still get some codes, 33 map sensor and 43 electronic spark control fault. I did not replace the knock sensor. I did not replace the cool attempt sensor. Those could be culprits, but so far there's been no misbehaving, so it seems. As you can see, I've begun to prep the car for paint, so stay tuned in the next video to see how that went.